we'll talk about Jamison Crowder. Now, Jamison Crowder, last week we were all wondering what was going on with him. It was voluntary OTAs, and he didn't show up. So what does that mean? You know, we hear that the Jets are trying to ask him uh, to take a pay cut. We don't know what's happening. We're hearing that it can be up, you know, all the way up to 50% pay cut. So we're wondering if Jamison Crowder is even going to be on the team. Right then, we hear that the Jets and Crowder have reached a deal for him to stay with the Jets for the 2021 season. We don't have the numbers as far as the time I'm recording this, but whatever it is, it got completed and Jamison Crowder is now in the house. Now, when we find out what the numbers are, it'll make some more sense. But here's a few things that I couldn't help but thinking. A few commenters on my videos brought some of this stuff up, and obviously I have my own thoughts as well. So one thing is this. Jamison Crowder is now in a very packed wide receiver room. We have Corey Davis, Keelan Cole, Denzel Mims, Elijah Moore, Berrios, and Crowder. Even after him, we have the two Smith brothers and then DJ Montgomery and a few other guys. Crowder is now not, he's not quite at the place where he was the last two years as pretty much our number one receiver. He's going to be part of a five receiver rotation. He might beat out Elijah Moore for the starting job. We don't know as far as the slot receiver, but it's going to be real hard to keep Elijah Moore off the field. Uh, especially considering what he can do for this team. So when you look at Jamison Crowder, you try to figure out what his role is here, right? There's really only a couple of options. One is he's going to be on the team for the whole entire 2021 season. He'll be, you know, he'll, he'll have an active role, not quite the same role as he's had over the past two years with us, but he'll have a consistent role and then maybe even if somebody goes down we at least have depth when last year if anybody went down we had the likes of chris hogan and and all you know we had dante Moncrief for a little while so instead of dropping all the way down to what are essentially practice squad guys you have some real legitimate depth let's say the the starting three on um, you know the two wides in the slot are corey davis keelan cole and and elijah moore one of them goes down. Isn't it nicer to have the fallback be Jameis and Crowder? And then even Berrios behind him? So we're talking about having real depth at the position. Then we still have Denzel Mims as well. The other thing is this. We were talking about trading uh, Jameis and Crowder all through the draft process and the offseason and all that sort of stuff. The problem with trading uh, Jamison Crowder is the fact that his contract was $10 million and nobody's going to take that on. So when you think about the potential to trade a guy like Crowder, having his contract down there in the five, six million dollar range, during training camps when guys start going down uh, on other teams, he's going to be incredibly attractive because guess what? The guy can actually play. It's not some scrub guy that you're looking at potential. He has a, a nice body of work behind him, uh, both in the Washington football team and for the New York Jets. The guy can play. He only misses a couple games a year. <laughs> you know, remember the, di remember the years when guys would actually make it all year? It's just not really the thing anymore so much. So when you look at how attractive Jamison Crowder is going to be, and let's say that the Jets really don't want to lose Vincent Smith, let's say, or even Jeff Smith. So we have the, the five with Crowder, we have our sixth being uh, Berrios, and then we have, we have some tough decisions to make, some guys that are younger with some potential, and they don't want to let one go knowing full well that they're going to let Crowder walk after the year because he's not part of the long-term plans. Don't you think it would be at least a consideration for them to accept calls on Crowder and maybe get rid of him trade him to a team for a fourth round pick or so i mean i think anywhere from from a third to a fifth is realistic for jamison crowder especially if a team is desperate and there's nobody out there you can see a guy like crowder being very very attractive to a team so it also does that now me personally i'm hoping that we keep jamison crowder i really am i like the idea of depth i like the idea that if someone goes down we're not all of a sudden out of nowhere hurting 
going from a really good situation to a dire situation in, in uh, 10 seconds. I just don't want to live that way anymore. And I think it would be smarter to keep him. But the option is there. And if they do want to keep a guy like Jeff Smith, let's say, don't you think they're looking at it like this? We have Jamison Crowder or Jeff Smith in a fourth. I don't know, especially when you know he's going to leave next year. So that's an interesting one to keep our eye on. Again, I'm hoping he just stays here. I'd like to give Zach Wilson as many weapons as we can. And let's make sure this kid succeeds. Let's do everything that we can to make sure he succeeds.